Well hi YouTubers, welcome to Picture This. My name's Dan and today I've brought you to Dolgorth Falls. I wouldn't say this is just outside Aberystwyth, but it's about an hour away. We're still in Wales, but today, the reason I brought you here today is because we've got a number of different waterfalls, some beautiful landscapes, etc. Now, I've been to this location before, but never to make a video. Now, if you're new to my channel, just remember I get out each week, I choose a new location, whether or not it's on photography, videography, or editing. Now, as I can say, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy my content, give me a thumbs up. But on that note, let's get straight on with the video. Well, hi guys, well thanks for sticking with me. Like I said, my name's Dan, and today I've brought you to Dolgorth Falls. Now, just behind me, as you can see, we've got this iconic bridge, and Natalie's doing his little travels around, eating all the grass. But I captured this bridge not long back, basically. I did, I've never shot a video here before, like I said earlier on, but this bridge is quite iconic. Now, I shot this, this image in black and white. Now, the reason I'm shooting in black and white for this particular image is because well, woodlands I find in black and white can be very, very distracting and very busy environments. But with the bridge being there, it creates some structure. It creates a focal point for you to be looking at rather a busy environment and looking at a bunch of trees and twigs and foliage. So if you are going to be shooting in, in woodlands, etc., try and think about structures around you, whether or not that's a bridge or a bench or a fence or anything that can tell a story about your photography. Now today, guys and girls, I've started on the 5D Mark III and I'm starting on the 85mm, the 24 by 85 millimeter lens. Now, the reason I've chosen this lens, there's no image, image stabilization on this lens. So when I do want to shoot for long exposure, um, I don't want any kind of image stabilization active on, uh, active on the lens. And the reason for that is because if we, if we have got it on, what's going to happen when the waterfall's flowing, and we want to try and capture that movement, the camera and the lens with obviously image stabilization turned on, it's going to try and stabilize that waterfall. Now, you want to be switching that off because at the end of the day, if you want to capture long exposure, you want to capture that movement, that flow through the water. So again, knock it off and yeah, and try and uh, see what kind of result you get with it and without. Now right, guys, I've come to the first fall basically at Old Orr, and it's just behind me. Now the, the flow of this water, like in my previous video, it's, quite, it's running quite rapid, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my tripod out. I've also got my trigger switch in the bag, so I'll possibly use that as well to try and stabilise the camera. Now I don't want to be shooting this freehand, not unless I'm going to be shooting some action shots. Now if I want to shoot long exposure, again, stabilise your camera. Now you've got to remember, long exposure can be captured on mobile phones, bridge cameras, 35mm film. It's all about being creative and being able to control my shutter speed. So if you shoot for long exposure, you say, and you, you are wondering how we do it, we, we, we manipulate that shutter speed. So it opens and closes, so enough time the motion to run through that exposure and again we end up with some really beautiful results so my first shot i'm going to be shooting in action so i'm going to be using a really fast up the speed to pick up that motion of the waterfall my second shot will be shot in long exposure again i'll be turning this uh, the shutter speed up so basically we've got a well down sorry we're going to be knocking it down to about two seconds or so three seconds which will be enough to capture the motion so we end up with a, blip, well, a nice flowing soft waterfall now, if you've got any questions during this video, leave them down below. Now, my next tip, guys, is when we're working on any kind of bodies of water, whether or not a stream or a river, a reservoir, a lake or a waterfall. Now, working in harsh lighting conditions, what, can, what tends to happen is the water will give off a really strong kind of glare. Now, the way to reduce that is to bring a polarizing filter with you. Now, a lot of people do shoot an ND, but what an ND filter does for you, it darkens the image completely. Now, with polarizing filters, they can enhance color sometimes, so pulling out the greens and the blues, etc. So again, if you are struggling, bring some filters with you to try and emphasize on some of that water detail without bringing out all those highlights in the water. Now my next helpful tip guys and girls is when we're in a woodland of any kind or a forest etc we will try and use this light to our advantage and how do we how do we work it to our advantage well firstly we want to find out the direction of the light so what you see a lot of cinematographers doing is walking around like this right and i'll put their hand out and i'll clench a fist 
Now you can see here the highlights, the shadows, as you say, so basically you get an idea of where that light's coming from. Now I am standing in the shade here a little bit, but I'm, I'm going to be taking a shot through the trees here. I know it looks a bit overexposed in the background because I've got no ND on the, uh, on the camera in front of me, but I have got one on the camera anyway, because this is some really, really strong light. Now, for this next shot, I'm going to be jumping into manual. And why am I jumping into manual? So I can have full control of that shutter speed, the ISO and the aperture and the white balance if I need it. Now, lots of people tend to keep white balance in automatic, but depending on what kind of conditions you're working in, whether that's cloudy or sunny or shady, I'd say drop that air up with that white balance off auto and bang it into the conditions that you're working in to get a better result. Well guys, I've changed my composition and changed my angle because earlier on in the video, I was over there, okay? So what I've done, I've, I've come to the other side, come to the other side of the waterfall, just to change my angle and my perspective on this waterfall. Now, if you get a bit close to this camera, guys. Now, again, I've still got the camera on the tripod, which is behind me. I still use the trigger switch because I don't want any vibration running through that camera when I hit that shutter button, okay? Let's go take some shots. Now just remember guys and girls that basically cameras work using light, okay? Now if you're working by any bodies of water, you've got to remember that water does reflect light, okay? By using the sun, etc. So if we're not careful, we can end up overexposing an image. What do I mean by overexposing an image? It's coming out too bright. And what do we mean by underexposing an image? Too dark, okay? So um, if, you, if you haven't brought a filter with you and you, and you are working in well, harsh lighting conditions, try and get into the shade, okay? To try and block back some of the harsh lighting conditions and say, depending on what lens you're using and what camera, you've got to remember that images can be captured beautifully on a mobile phone or, or DSLR or bridge camera, etc., which I've said in my previous videos. Now, don't forget to think about my four standing shot rule where we take a shot like this, straight on, okay? We turn to the right, take a shot from the right, we take a shot from the left, and we take a shot behind us. So we've taken four shots, okay, without moving off the spot. Well, we move, but we don't move very far. So remember, think about all those elements around you and bring in some of those details to tell a story through your photography. Now this next shot I want to take, guys and girls, is just a small little trick of a waterfall, okay? Now, I could shoot this long exposure, but I don't feel enough water or flow running through this to be able to create a nice effect. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in burst mode, well, high speed continue, or should I say burst mode? Well, if you're not shooting on DSLR and you want to be able to capture that movement, Bang your mobile phone into burst mode. You can see Marley's with me here today, so he's out again on my adventures with me. But again, if you're using a mobile phone, get into burst mode and literally put your finger on that shutter button and hold it. And what it'll do, it'll take a number of shots in burst mode and then you can decide out that burst which edge which you feel looks best. Well, I've come to my final waterfall, guys. It's right at the top of the gorge. It's just in my bottom, well bottom right, it's over there in the corner. I've got the cameras back on the tripod, back on the trigger switch. I'm going to shoot this in long exposure and in both actions. So let's go and get some shots anyway. Now the first shot I want to take is in long exposure. Now when I want to get into action, I'm going to take it off the tripod so I can shoot freehand and get a bit closer. Now if some questions during the video, leave them down below. Now for this shot, I'm going to be shooting in TV mode, which stands for time value. Now the reason I'm using this particular shooting method is because I'm in charge of that shutter speed, okay? But the camera's actually going to decide on the aperture for me. Now I can control that ISO, but again, I want to try and keep that as low as possible so we don't end up with too much noise and grain running through our images. Now this next waterfall, guys, I'm quite lucky in a sense because it's, it's over there in the corner, if you noticed, right? But what I'm noticing with it, a lot of these highlights are on the leaves, etc. And the waterfall seems to be in the shade. So as long as the waterfall's in the shade, you shouldn't need any filters on your camera, or on your lens, sorry. But again, I want to try and get a little bit closer, but 
If I can't, then I'll try and literally, yeah, I'll try and zoom in with the 85 to try and get a better shot. Now, I would like to shoot this in long exposure. So again, the tripod's a must, okay? Don't try and shoot long exposure without a tripod, okay? Because you just can end up with results looking like this. Now guys, I've come to a tree stump, which is kind of like a lucky tree stump for us here at Dolgor. Because at the end of the day, it's full, full of coins, okay? Now, when I was here last time, just taking a walk, I was making a video, you can see all the coins in it, look. Yeah. Right, so, yeah, I'll take a picture of this in a minute, I'll share the image with you. But when I was here shooting this last time, I grabbed a massive rock, I grabbed my 10p out of my pocket, and I started hammering it down, hammering and hammering, hammering. <laughs> and before I know it, I was like, ah! <laughs> I hurt my hand, I smashed the rock between my finger, the coin I was bashing in, and the coin that was already in there. So, yeah, I was going to say be careful, Dan, <laughs> but let's get some shots. Now again, I'm shooting the manual, I want to try and keep the ISO as low as possible, but again, I want to open the aperture up to allow, allow some light in there, nice fast shutter speed, so I don't end up with any motion blur or blurry pictures. But let's get some shots, with that bang in my hand. Just remember, when we're on location doing any form of photography, whether or not we're in a town, a village, a city, a woodland, a forest, etc., you're going to find leading lines everywhere, okay? Whether or not that's a fence or a railing, etc. And try and use these to, to your advantage to draw the viewer's eyes into, into the picture to try and tell an interesting story about the subject you're trying to capture. Well, guys and girls, that's the end of the video. But my last tip for you guys is when we're shooting any type of waterfall, try and shoot in different apertures so turning up that f-stop and also obviously turning it down we've got different shutter speeds to try and get a different result on every waterfall that you're trying to capture now if my video has been helpful give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already hit that subscribe i get out every week and we choose a new location every week and we go out shooting discussing and talking about different aspects of photography videography or editing but on that note we're going to be leaving it there but thanks for watching guys take care